Welcome to this screencast on Windows Server 2012. My name is Jeff Alexander and today I'm going to talk to you uh, a little bit about the new server manager in Windows Server 2012. Um, I'm logged on to a Windows 8 client right now and I am running the Windows 8 RSAT tools uh, which is a free download that you can download to a Windows 8 client machine and that is used to manage remote servers uh, and you'll notice right away that the uh, server Manager itself is a much different UI than uh, what we had in previous versions of Windows Server. And to give you a bit of a background on uh, where we came with this, uh, uh, previous versions of Windows, uh, right from Windows Server 2000, 2003, uh, 2008, were designed really to manage single servers. And we all know that you have multiple servers in your environment. So Server Manager in uh, Server uh, Windows Server 2012 was uh, rethought and rewritten from the ground up uh, with the modern UI in mind uh, to uh, manage multiple servers. Uh, so as you can see from my dashboard here, I don't have a whole bunch of stuff in here at this point in time. I haven't added any of my servers in that I want to manage. So let's go ahead and add uh, these additional servers. We'll just get rid of um, a couple of these uh, errors that we've got here and we'll just go and add our other servers to manage. And what you'll notice here is that there are two different ways for me to actually add servers. Well, a couple of different ways for us to add servers in. The first being uh, through Active Directory. Okay, so I can go through Active Directory. I can type the fully qualified name of the server. Or I can go and search for that server and add that as a server I want to manage. Now, in order for me to be able to manage that server, the server has to be running Windows Server uh, 2008, 2008 R2 or 2012. Now on 2008, um, you need to be running Service Pack 2, and on 2008 R2, you need to be running uh, Service Pack 1, and on both of those, you need to have the um, uh, remote management, of, uh, so the, the Windows uh, Management Framework 3.0, which is a free download that you can actually get. Uh, I did a uh, blog post on this recently that gives you the details of where you need to download that. So the other places that I can get uh, information from is I can go into DNS and I can put in uh, the fully qualified DNS name. Now this could be for uh, a server that's not hosted on premise. It might be hosted in the cloud and you want to manage that server as well or you want to manage a server at another customer. You can then also go and import um, a file uh, with a list of computer names as well. In this case we're going to go and search for uh, our Active Directory and I'm going to go and choose the, the servers that I want to manage. And it's just a case of multi-selecting the ones I want to add here. Now you're going to notice that I've got a couple of uh, nodes uh, in a cluster. Uh, the great thing about Server Manager is it'll go and add all the objects uh, to Server Manager that it needs to manage uh, by just adding one node in the cluster. So we're going to go and add uh, our domain controller, node 1 and server 1. We're also going to go and add server 2. We're going to add our DHCP client. We have a direct access server in here as well. And we're going to go and add a 2008 R2 server that we have in our environment as well. And let's just go and add those in. So we've selected seven computers. And then what you're going to see is that server manager is going to start to build your canvas for you and customize that based on the servers that you've added. With Server Manager being uh, designed for multi-server management, it's focused on uh, the roles that you currently have installed uh, in your environment. So it's looking at uh, here, what it's doing is it's looking at all the roles that are currently installed across all these seven servers or 12 servers that I've added in this particular uh, console. And it's looking at all those servers and building the dashboard accordingly uh, for those number of servers that are added. Now, and I can, I can uh, go and get a quick glanceable view of what's going on in my environment here. What you can see is that we have our dashboard uh, showing us all the different roles that are currently installed over here on the left. Then we have our welcome tile here in the middle and the welcome tile you can go ahead and hide that if you want to if you just want to actually see your roles and your server groups. And then we we build these, um, these actionable um, task panes for all the different roles that are currently uh, running in your environment based on the servers I've just added. So what you can see here is that I've got um, a number of errors. Obviously, I've got a lot of red in my uh, environment right now. But what I can, one of the great things about Server Manager with this new version is the ability to take direct action on issues that are occurring within your environment. So what you can see here is that I've got uh, a number of services that are currently uh, not uh, stopped, or sorry, not started on, on a number of machines. 
And previously, in order for us to actually start a service, you would have to do what? You would have to probably remote desktop into that particular server to start that service, find out what the service actually is. What we do with Server Manager in 2012 is we're able to actually go and um, grab that information and then you can go and multi-select all the services and go ahead and start those services directly from the console, which is something that's actually new. Okay, so now it shows you it's going through and it's going and updating uh, the number of services that I have. I can also go and look at uh, some of the events that I might have had. I've got some critical error messages on uh, one of my cluster nodes so that I can then go and uh, take action on that particular um, error that's actually there. So I can go and see the alert criteria, go and see what's going on on those particular environments. So it allows me to take direct action so that that dashboard is, is built and customizable by you. After we've added those servers, it automatically goes and creates the all servers group, which allows you to go and see all your servers in your environment. And the great thing about Server Manager is it gives you a snapshot view of all of the servers that I've got in my environment. And you can see a couple of them are having issues with uh, re retrieving uh, performance data or, or data at this point in time. Uh, it tells me what, uh, and I, I've chosen to choose what processors I've got on these particular machines. You can customize this uh, across here uh, to however you actually like and go and group that the way you want. The next pane that we actually see further down is uh, the services that are currently uh, installed. And I'll just go and deselect uh, that server. And we'll go and look at, say, my domain controller. And what you can see here is as I select servers, uh, it tells me what is going on. I have uh, what we're actually tracking for uh, in Window in Server Manager itself is events, services, best practice analyzer information, and performance history data. So it's giving me uh, performance history over time, and it's also telling me the roles and the features that are currently installed on that box. So I can go and create custom groups. We have the all servers group, and what I can do is I can go to the manage tab, and I can go and create uh, an additional server group, and I can call this, say, infrastructure servers. And I can go and add the servers that I want to manage. And we'll just go and add a couple of servers to this. We'll say three servers. Then that gives me a customized pane that I can go and see uh, what's going on on those particular servers, allowing me to further customize this. A lot, of question, a lot of the questions we get around managing older operating systems is being able to monitor or manage 2008 uh, R2 servers and 2008 servers. In order for you to manage these servers, and you see I've got a 2008 R2 server here, and you can see that that's online, and I'm also getting performance data on this as well. In order for me to do this, I need to download the Windows Management Framework 3.0. And what the Management Framework 3.0 does is it gives you PowerShell v3, it gives you some additional WMI capability, and allows you to um, get performance data so that you can see where that on your older servers as well. As far as 2003 servers, we don't do too much management of those servers as well. But uh, it's fairly, fairly straightforward to get it on the two, uh, uh, 2008 uh, servers and up, and that allows you to manage those particular servers. You also notice that um, when I added one node in my cluster, it added all of my cluster um, resources. It added the name of the, the actual cluster, uh, which is the cluster.contoso.com. It added any of the DNS uh, objects that needed to be added. It added all the nodes within the cluster so that I could go and manage that. Now, if we want to go and uh, manage, go and uh, look at additional tools, we can go to the tools menu and we can go and find all those additional tools that we need to manage uh, this within Server Manager. The other thing that's uh, great about Server Manager is that as you go and click on different services, so if I go and click on, for example, if I go to Active Directory uh, Domain Services, it brings up the one server I have in my environment that's running Active Directory Domain Services. And when I right click on that, it gives me the tools that relate to that particular role. Uh, so this is a, a quick way for you to go to other tools to do other tasks without having to actually go and search for them. Just right click on the server that you want to actually manage and it'll take you directly to that. The other thing that's quite good is that uh, one of the roles that I actually got in this was file and storage services. Everything to do with file and storage services is managed through Server Manager. Uh, whether it be managing the servers, whether it be managing all of our volumes, 
all of that stuff is actually managed through Server Manager itself. I'm going to go through some storage stuff in, a, in an upcoming screencast, but I wanted to show you how this is, uh, gives you everything that you would normally use about five or six different tools uh, within here. You can go manage your disks, you can go and manage your storage pools, you can go manage all of your shares, uh, which is something that we, uh, we want to actually do, do quite a lot. And you'll notice that as we move down into shares here, one of the things we've added with Server Manager is this notion of what we call jump off points. So when you, you're in the shares uh, uh, canvas, you'll notice that it brings up um, volume details for that particular server and also quota details because it knows that you're going to want to look at the volumes that your shares are currently stored on to get the free, um, the use space and the free space. And you may actually want to actually add a, add a quota by doing using the um, uh, AdRod to install the file server resource manager on that box. So server manager is really a, a way for you to get a snapshot of what you've got going on in your environment, allows you to manage multiple servers, whether they're hosted on-premise or in the cloud, and it also uh, allows you to take direct action for issues that are currently going on in your environment. So this has been a fairly quick uh, overview of server manager in Windows Server 2012. Thank you very much, and I'll see you at an upcoming screencast.